Hi, how's it going? By the way, the, the title of this one is I am starting to understand why some developers don't like C++. We'll get to the drama in a second, but a few things to get through first. One of which is shout out to the Ghost Cafe. I got this cup, I'm not sure how well this is coming through, but this cup has all these different ghosts, ghost characters. We have Prayat, the giant ghost, Krasu, the, uh, the head, Kumantong, the baby ghost, Nangchada, the evil dancer, sort of poltergeist ghost, Krahang, the flying ghost, wife of Krasu, and Pop, the cannibal ghost, and all of these ghosts, plus more, are going to be in my game. But anyway, after after much much pain and suffering, I got the thing working, sort of. So I'll just fire this up, and I'll put some dramatic music in as well for effect. So the concept here is sort of like, what do they call it, a shadow box, where you have layers. We can see that the particles are rendered first, and then everything else goes on top. Something which is really cool, it's a little hard to see right now, but if I... Yeah. If I or any of the other characters die, you can see that actually the animated characters are being rendered on yet another layer. And this has sort of a cool effect that you've got a hitbox which gives the ground level, but that has some, some margin within the box mesh. You know what I mean. There's a little bit of, if the ground is uneven, you'll sort of walk below that. I'm doing a bad job of explaining it. But this is what I have at this moment. I've also taken the camera and abstracted it out to its own camera system. The benefit of that is that I can do view frustrum checks. I repurpose my old software and uh, software rendering code to do view frustrum checks. That means that now any animated objects outside of the camera's view frustrum will not be animated. They'll still move, they just won't be animated. And that's a big deal because that is a high computational overhead. And also, whenever these particles go outside the view frustrum, they're deleted or rather reset to, um, yeah, to the beginning. Okay, so in setting this up, I had a few technical challenges, and this is getting this is getting onto the topic of this video, annoyances. But let me first explain what's happening. So when I go to render, I have a whole bunch of frame buffer objects, and each of those frame buffer objects is a layer. I have six of them. I'm only using three at the moment. In future I'll use more to get a parallax background. But um, 
But what I do is I go ahead and I clear the color and I set the clear value to an alpha of zero. That doesn't affect how things appear on the screen because so typically with a blend function, it's a linear combination. You have an incoming fragment, a source fragment, and a destination fragment. And the transformation is the destin, remembering this right, the destination fragment after blending is equal to a source factor times a source fragment plus a destination frag factor times the destination fragment. And you can actually set those factors separately for the color and the alpha. With my textures, I do not have any transparency. I'm doing multiplicative blending. The way you achieve multiplicative blending is you set the source factor to be the destination color. So in other words, and then you set the destination factor to be zero. So you get like the final fragment after blending is equal to the destination color times the incoming source color plus zero times the existing destination color. I hope that makes sense. And then because I'm doing separate blend functions, I also just go um, add the two alphas together. Wherever I've rendered something on my frame buffer, I want to have just that color with full alpha. And then wherever I haven't rendered something, I want that fragment to have zero alpha because I'm going to be slotting, compositing these things together. Also in my fragment shader, I am doing a little bit of thresholding with the alpha. So basically what I do is I sample the color and then I take say one minus the red channel as the alpha. And I also do a threshold operation with an if else. Okay. So if we look at this, what do we have? I'll go with this. And then we draw the animated characters. So here we can just see the character. Now if I, and we can see down the bottom here that it has all of its color, but it has zero alpha. But then on the other hand, if I capture a pixel where I've rendered, then yeah, we have black color, no worries. And we have an alpha set to one. And this is ensuring that I can composite these textures on top of each other with regular alpha blending and all that orange region, it won't block out the layer below, basically. What do we have here? Same situation. So if I were to, you know, click in here, you can see, okay, I've rendered something, I have an alpha of one, click in here, render something, I have an alpha of zero. Now, onto the drama kept you waiting long enough. I've got this vector of pointers to frame buffers. This involved a lot of debugging because originally I had a vector of underlying values, a vector of frame buffer instances. And I can hear you screaming at me right now. Just, just do pointers, just do pointers. Well, there are two issues. Number one is I wanted to avoid pointer arithmetic, you know, dereferencing pointers basically. There's an overhead with that. And then number two, it was almost working. When I rendered this, everything was appearing. The static geometry was appearing, the animated characters were appearing, except for the main character. Ah, uh, can you understand how frustrating that is? Because the other animated characters, the enemies were appearing, but the main character wasn't. And then to complicate things more, when I captured it in RenderDoc, the main character was there and everything was working perfectly. So it was working perfectly in RenderDoc, it was working imperfectly in Visual Studio, and all it came down to was that pointer. And by the way, I still don't, let's be honest, I still don't 100% understand why only one of the characters wasn't rendering. If the thing fails, I would expect it to fail uniformly. This had me completely stymied and it was very frustrating. But hey, even if I had to use pointers, I got it working in the end. 
So I hope you enjoyed that little step through and yeah, I'll see you again soon. All right, bye. Listen to that.